You're live. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Stephanie Stevens Show. Today on my show, right here live on Facebook, I have the incredible Gigi and Dave Stryker, and co-hosting today is Ren. Mm -hmm. This is our fetish show. Today is about fetishes, our deepest desires, the underworld of fetish. We, I, I thought that this would make an interesting conversation um, for us to reveal some of our desires that we are afraid to talk about. So that's why I asked Gigi and Dave to come on today. I've known Dave for a while, and um, I know that he's very deeply involved in the community and in this world of fetish, this, this latex, this leather. And I find that people are interested in this but are scared to venture out. So today I asked them on my show, so how are you guys doing, Gigi and Dave? Mm -hmm. We're doing okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, you came dressed appropriately. We can't, yeah. Well, you are beautiful. I must say, Thank the makeup you. is incredible. Oh, Everything Thank is you. beautiful. And I'm not yeah. just saying that. You know you got it going <laughs> on. She's gorgeous. Yeah. She's beautiful. <laughs> so, now, the reason I asked you, I know this is always nerve-wracking to be in front of an audience and to be on TV and, and to just reveal your deepest desires. Now, you know we all have some sort of fetish or desire, and we're kind of scared to act it out, but yet we act it out behind doors. Gigi, you as a female, well, first of all, let me, just ask, let me ask this. I mean, it, it, I, I really want our audience to understand what we're talking about today. How do you guys identify? Fetishwise or like yeah. as, a, as a person? Let's say I identify as she, he, Oh. They, us, queen. queen. I'm queen. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. I Okay. Now, the reason I wanted you on the show is because I thought that this is interesting. I see Dave sometimes around town doing this thing, and I see people watching, and I can see them watching him intensely. Not maybe that they're curious, or maybe because they're. Um, they just don't understand or they just think that he's maybe mentally ill or he's he's strange in a way. Gigi, as a woman, how do you see yourself in this world? Do you enjoy this? I enjoy it because, I mean, I've always been a little bit different, so I think you can express yourself uh, the way you want to. It just, it gives, it, it's very empowering for, like, myself or ourselves along with um, inspi inspiring to, like, other people. You know, to be who you want, say what you want, dress how you want, you know. Mm -hmm. um, that's I mean, the that's thing, because right. everybody has a bit of different inside of them, right? Mm -hmm. And, like, I feel by kind of doing this and putting our different out to the world and not being afraid to show it, it kind of maybe will give other people the idea that, yes, you can take your different and show it too. Because it's inside of everybody. Everybody's got their own little personality inside, and everybody's got their stuff that they keep behind closed doors. You know? But people, I wish, I'd be even sad that some people aren't. Well, some people are scared of it. They're like, ooh. I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, like, oh my god. Like, what is this? They're sinister, you know? Or it's just like, no, it's, it's not very fun, and it's, it's more like sexual than it is anything. So, I, you know, yeah. I always thought about that. I always, I like when I used to go to the leather parties or to the All About Sex show. I went there a couple of times. They actually had, had me perform. And it's strange. I'm, I'm one, I'm very sexual, but I'm, I'm not sexual when it comes to um, the act of acting out sexually. Now, it's, a, it's also beyond sexual. That's what people don't understand. It's a bond that, like, I feel like to the normal person, they're either walking down the street, whole partners holding hands. Mm -hmm. That's just how I'm getting that feeling. This is my holding hands. Oh. This is uh, um, our our bond. Okay. This is me feeling good. This is her feeling good being in that position that she's in. Okay. Right. So, Gigi, as a as a as a woman, how do you do you enjoy this? I enjoy it, yeah, of course I enjoy it. I mean, I like, there's there's different facets of the relationship, you know, there's this, I mean, we still, you know, fight like normal couples, but there's just like a different component. I find it kind of builds a, a deeper trust because you're not, like, scared to talk about taboos and not, like, necessarily dogging a vanilla lifestyle. Everyone can 
do say what they choose or, or feel. You know what I mean? But like it just you're open to express yourself sexually, and I think that creates a stronger bond. You know. So just when you have things. So when you when, so it, for me it's like when I'm dressing up, I feel the part. I feel like I'm sexy, or I feel like I mm -hmm. want to have sex because I feel like people oh, will yeah. be attracted to me. Now, do you feel that way when you're done up? Or you just, are you doing it for? Well, it's, it's different moods. So like certain clothing will, you know, be for different moods. Mm -hmm. Like there's, um, I don't really know how to answer that. But can I answer that? <laughs> <laughs> like sometimes we're just up to be like a kind of bitchy and then sometimes we're to be like, like sex fixin' or, like you know, we're going to be like. Yes, people are going to look yeah. at you and just want to have yeah, or sometimes we're just like it's sexy, it's right? full rubber and just kind of like just be like dehumanized as well. So there's there's different um, like options you have for the evening or the daytime if you like. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, yeah. so is this is this is this something you do on a regular basis or is it just something that you two do? Um, this the, the the heavier part, the the, the sensual part. Is it something? Do you include other people? Um, into your fantasy? We 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 do professionally too, right? So um, oh, okay. Also, we, we do, uh, we provide sessions, we probably like, provide services professionally, mm -hmm. and so we're both in it in that way, so mm -hmm. yes, like we So, do. you basically, are you, are you, are you, are you, are you like, are you, are you escorts, or is this just a... Professional, just a, uh, we just send providers. Oh, okay. So, professional bonds. So, how do you, how do, how do you say, is it BDSM? SM, yeah. Okay, BDSM. What does it actually stand for? Bondage, discipline, and sadomasochism. Yeah. Okay. Now, a, a lot of people out there, you know, Dave. Like I said, I've known you for a long time, and I, I, I it, for me, it's interesting to see a, a good-looking man, your man, Gigi, walking down the street in this leather outfit, and you know that he wouldn't be walking this way if he wasn't gifted in all areas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Now, do you, are you jealous when you see other women looking at Dave? No, no, not at all. I mean, it's, um, am I jealous? No. <laughs> now, Dave, when you guys invite people over, let's just say in a professional manner, and sometimes they might I mean, want a not... little bit more, because sometimes this, the way you guys look, say something more than what sometimes your services would actually say, let's say if you had them on the wall. These are our services, but when people come to see you, they automatically think, what do they think? They get well, told I mean, right away, pretty yeah, much. We, we, yeah, we said that's true. We also uh, yeah. do a big screening, we do a big uh, before mm -hmm. session conversation, the yeah. minutes and what we're not going to do, we make that clear. And if somebody over Stop the session, and we will make them go home. Yeah, and that, that, discuss the that's the thing. And yeah, part of them, because they're stuff. coming yeah. for um, a part our participation in also our, our what we do. Not it's not a right. You kind of thing. Also, it's Sorry, guys. Always necessarily about you know the money or work or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 a comfort thing too. Yeah. Like if it has I has to be know. a good fit. Okay. Yeah. Now, can I, I? This is more of a personal question. You don't have to answer. Have she you She wants ever, the nitty gritty down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever felt that the guy or the girl that came through the door was the perfect threesome? For you too. Well, not on my end per se, but no. I, I would rather just go somewhere like on vacation to do that. I really like to mix the whole thing. Yeah, the, thing. Um, no. the whole sexual, like actually, sec like intercourse part of it isn't there for me in a session at all. Mm -hmm. It's not like the only person I want to have sex with is her. Okay. That's it. Now, Gigi, have you ever, ever felt that you wanted to have sex with another man in the sense of the BDSM? Certain times it just pissed me off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> of course. I like him to watch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now, now that you, 
now that you've gotten the courage to go out like this, when you feel like that this, what sparks you to say, Dave, I want you to put on your Titus PVC or your leather, mm -hmm. and I want us to, let's just say, fuck like buddies. <laughs> Uh, seven o'clock at night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's always about time and playtime. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's every it's, particular day, but yeah. Well, you know, mm -hmm. as women, we like to dress up and look pretty. Mm -hmm. Sometimes men, this is for you, Gigi. Sometimes mm -hmm. men like us to look like whores. Is yeah. that okay with you with the fetish? If, let's say if they wanted you to look like when he was a whore. Uh -huh. And you know, um, for me, if I was, I'm, I, I don't want to answer it for you. Mm -hmm. How do you feel if Dave wanted you to dress up like a whore? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> like a whore? Well, define whore. What, 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 is, what is a whore? Like, Some people, a whore is a librarian. Yeah, no, 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 that's like yeah how do you define whore? That's like, the thing is the society uh, has these little categories they put people into. Mm -hmm. And that, that goes against like, that it, it, it concretes this this uh, patriarchy kind of thing where men are like, you either look like this or you look like this and here's a role. It's like, no, women should be able to walk out the door with what they want to wear without mm -hmm. being pl placed in a category like that because Men don't have to run everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then they're like, don't at the end of the day, happy wife, happy life, and it goes across the board. Like, I, would, like, no. I, I right. would be happy to walk out the door with her in a burlap sack or mm -hmm. in a thong bikini, and as long as she's happy and feels good with herself, I'm Well, you know, <laughs> the reason I asked that, right. you, you know how we, we live in the world of drag. And sometimes transsexuals or people who are cross-dressing. Mm -hmm. These are heavy fetishes for men. And they really want, even though really they're interested in maybe the male member, mm -hmm. they're um, they're more interested in you, the person looking much different than what their wife would look like. Oh, now, like pushing the limits kind of and mm -hmm. something like the dress for shock value. I mean, I like to do it to a point. I mean, I just um yeah, I, I don't really know how to answer the question, actually. Um, if he wanted me to, he'd be open for discussion. I'm not close to anything, but um, I like to dress the way I want. And he doesn't really have a say anyway, so mm -hmm. it doesn't really make a difference. Yeah, she wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> he can want me to wear a burlap sack, and if I don't want to, I'm not going to. Okay, yeah. so now, have you ever felt, the reason I keep putting the question to you, I'll come to you in a minute, mm -hmm. is because I'm I'm trying to make it all connect as far mm -hmm. as to, just for us not to just be rambling about our sex. I, I wanted to mm -hmm. make sense to people out there talking, okay. listening to us. You, have you ever felt like, I just want you, Dave, mm -hmm. to be a man, mm -hmm. and I need what I need, and you're going to do what I say Mm -hmm. Tonight, the way I want things to go, because generally men want are one way with sex. They they get what they get, and mm -hmm. then they leave. And most of the time, eighty to ninety percent of women are unsatisfied when a man is really done having sex with them. That what is it, five to ten, fifteen minutes maximum? Mm -hmm. <laughs> if that, well, <laughs> if that, um, I guess I think start off by saying I'm very happy with what I have. Mm -hmm. Um. If there was ever something that I that he hasn't covered, mm -hmm. um, he would cover when I asked him about it. Um, like, yeah, there's nothing. But that's the thing. There's nothing really like that we don't feel comfortable talking about, you know. Mm -hmm. So now, have you ever felt that? Just thought to yourself, mm -hmm. being a woman. I, I'll come to you in a minute, Dave. Have you ever, <laughs> you know, have you ever felt, thought to yourself, is this the right man for me? And am I going too far? Too far? Um, no, I, mean, I think it's a journey. I mean, you just keep, you keep growing and developing together and learning new things. Um, but is it going too far? If it's a good fit, hey man, who freaking knows? But just play fun. You should have fun. You know, be able to laugh at yourself and you know, just just be okay with making mistakes and not being perfect and just trying things, but you know, staying in your bubble and stay in your comfort zone all the time and you know, crossing your teeth and dotting your eyes, is, is he have this, 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 or he or she or whatever in a partner, it's just like, oh my God, just 
go with your gut and just go with your instinct sometimes. Mm -hmm. Believe yeah. in love, right? Like, yeah. Now, you know, a lot of times when we see these kind of things, whether it's the BDSM um, fetishes or we see people that have the deeper fetishes, like I know some guys that like to dress up like babies right. and want to sit in cages, mm -hmm. I've heard. It's a lot of work, yeah. 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 These are, do, are, do you guys do this at your service? Do I don't, I don't like to do that stuff really. I'm not, that's not my thing. I mean, I, I mean the bondage thing, yeah. We... But not the baby thing and all that stuff. Okay, know, what's the weirdest sure. thing you guys have done? What's the weirdest? Um, the face twitch guy? I oh, know, yeah, that was, I, I was a little different. Yeah, but, uh, so, I, yeah, I mean, there's some really... What did you say, the face twitch? Yeah, um, yeah. I, I had a guy who was uh, turned on by this, uh, uh, Saw a Sesame Street uh, episode of Child. Yeah. Because that's where all sexuality starts. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, I mean, fetishes like go range. They range, and this sort of learning is not just like A, B, or C. It's mm -hmm. it, they range so far. Like I've seen, I, I, I usually see the the, the, the clear cut like bread and butter. Here's a normal brain bondage. Yeah, but show, 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 show it. Show um, okay. Because he has a really good, he has a really expressive eye. So I had to uh, replicate this clown that he saw, to, and it, it was me of the clown putting on his makeup, but in reverse, and sped up. I don't know how to do it. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm doing it. 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 i am i don't make sense to anybody else but the real thing. Now, have you guys ever felt, I mean, as women, Gigi, we know women are under a constant threat from men, in a sense mm -hmm. of some way, or either they're trying to pick you up, or they're trying to harm you, mm -hmm. or they're trying to do certain things because you won't do what they want mm -hmm. you to do. Now, have you ever mm -hmm. felt you were in danger? Any any real danger? Like, have you just felt like, oh my God, I've got to get away from this? I have been like pretty confident all of my life. Um, I, I've never really felt in danger per se. It's crazy, but I never really have. Mm -hmm. there, I'm always aware of my surroundings. I'm always like, I, I, I can read people really easily, so I don't put myself in a position to be able to have those weaknesses exploited or whatever. Like I wouldn't, yeah. Do I ever feel scared? No, I don't oh, okay. feel scared. Never. Now, have the two of you, it, this is more of another personal question for the both of you. Have you ever had sex in front of other people in your business, in your profession? Oh, yeah. yeah. How did it feel? It's cool, actually. Uh, it's kind of exciting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See that? Reason's working yeah. out. <laughs> now, the reason I ask that is because sometimes, you know, when you're, uh, there's a third person, they always call it the third wheel. Mm -hmm. And that person, usually somebody always gets left out. Now, I've been in many relationships. Um, mm -hmm. And I, at my last relationship, I tried to do, I didn't really want to be in a relationship. I sort of wanted to sort of be friends with benefits. and But we have been together, I think, too long for that to happen. Mm -hmm. So, but I tried to do the threesome thing. That went over like a lead balloon. Yeah. So, and then I reached, I, I tried to do it again to mm. sort of say, you know, we can be together and let's try. Mm. It just doesn't work for me. It didn't work. Mm. And uh, I'm kind of glad I'm alone now because I can just do what I want. Mm. But Dave, now, how do you feel when other men, mainly in your business, you know, they see this attractive woman here and they come to your place and she's got everything going on. And what's the fetish? How do you feel when you see other men look at Gigi that way? Well, I I feel pretty good because like I know when she walks outside and like people read the comments and stuff like that. People think she's gorgeous. I think she's gorgeous. She's beautiful, and they should. And, and she should have that reinforcement. And I don't feel bad. I know she's not out looking for more dick. I have, right? I know that. <laughs> and I, I know that um I know that she's faithful, I know that she's uh trustworthy, and I know that it's not a bad thing, right? And when, when clients come over, um 
<clears throat> I will bring them to her and I'll feel good about it and I'll know what's going on in that session. Okay. And I'll get excited. So, so, so it's basically, if this is a business speaker. And the thing during the day is just really to, when you're walking around, is to promote the business. Well, we live the lifestyle, right? Oh, you live the lifestyle. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, so we live a lot of the lifestyle of this, right? Mm -hmm. So this is like our connection. This is our, this is, we, we feel um, the same as a vanilla couple holding hands down the street and the closeness they have and, you know, give you a kiss. Mm -hmm. I feel that from, from this. And well, you know, I can see a connection between the two of you, and that's a good energy. I don't feel that thing where sometimes couples, they have that backup, and you know, and it's usually the sexuality thing that, that keeps a grip on couples, that <laughs> makes them, you know, more leery about the other one. And, you know, it's great to see that you guys are in this underground world of fetish. You know, the, for me, this BDS thing is things that people probably should explore a little bit more um, because it will make their sex life more interesting. It yeah, also don't makes, judge it so much. Like, mm -hmm. judge it also it. makes outside of your sex life more solid and it makes a bigger mm -hmm. connection. Like like she said, we fight sometimes, we need arguments and stuff, but... Mm -hmm. Can I in interrupt with something really interesting? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of connections in you guys talking. I have autism. And a lot of the things you speak of, this is like us holding hands. This is a different way of doing it. This is how we feel um, the textures, the, the looks, the smells. Um, with autism, I relate to a partner differently. It's not a BDSM way, but I don't like to hold hands, but I would like to hold a leash. Yeah, it's... I don't like the feeling of sweaty skin, but I do like the feeling of other things. Mm -hmm. So it could be a way for people to express different things. If you don't want to deal with one thing in your life because there's something about it, mm -hmm. there may be another way to exactly. express that. And it may not be what everyone wants, but the way you guys express yourself is the way you want to express yourself. It's that a makes you comfortable. path to the same root, yes. to the same end, right? Like mm -hmm. it's basically just a relationship, a bit of a different dynamic, but that dynamic provides us with the ability to feel what they feel like everyone else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand that. That's what I relate yeah. to. It makes you feel like everyone else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, this is for me, I've always, and, and, and part, being part of the, um, LGBT two spirit pronoun community, which includes us all in a sense, uh, because a lot of times people suppress their sexual desires, mm -hmm. and I'm sure you guys see that when you come there. They're probably nervous, mainly because they don't know what they're walking into, and mm -hmm. what the, and they haven't really explained what they really want to happen, because a lot of times people will say one thing, but they need another. Well, that's the, 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 the screening process. Um, we have a way of having a long conversation and kind of getting a little bit deeper than they are. are we're, we're at first comfortable with going mm -hmm. with, with the words, but that has to happen because like we're going into a situation where they're walking into a, and this is the thing, they're walking into a situation that could potentially cause them trauma, right? Mm -hmm. So. You have to get to the bottom of it. You have to know everything. Mm -hmm. So you have to learn to pull that out of people before mm -hmm. walking in there. That's a must, right? So is would you say that your clients are 80, 90 percent satisfied when they leave the services that you two provide? Right. Well, yeah, of course. For I sure. Mean, there's more. also like there's also like a vanilla business side component. I mean, but it's not just only like BDSM um, working stuff versus the other stuff. Okay. But yeah, satisfied, yeah. Customer service is number one, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> so, which is true. Customer yeah, always regardless, right. across the board, when you're vanilla, you're selling ice cream, customer service is 101. Even in translates into stuff, lifestyle, right? Because we want people to be happy. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. They, you know, that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of times people are selfish. Yeah, well, if you care about your clients, you care about, you know, Mm -hmm. Your your well, that, brand, you know, you want to make sure people are. That's happy. the whole finding out about uh, everything, uh, everything that's going on in their mind about calling you mm -hmm. before you. It's not like where somebody goes, you're available now. Yeah, come over. That doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. You have to be willing to get on the phone. You have to be willing to tell us everything. Mm -hmm. Right? So now, we did not to cut you out there. Gigi, I think I want to just for you. This is a for you. And now, I'm sure your you, you, how does your family feel? Your mom. Because, you know, your mothers are something else sometimes. Oh, She's not very receptive, and I find that as she's gotten, you know, older, she's gotten really uh, a lot more opinionated and said a lot of things. End of the day, I don't really speak to my family. It's not because of this, but um, I mean, yeah, one day I would like to just go in and just be and accept it. Okay. It what about you, Dave? How does your family feel? I mean, I'm sure if, if you're, you, I mean, I don't know, are you from Toronto? Uh, no, I came from Newmarket. Okay, so uh, does your family know you do this? Yeah, actually, I haven't spoken for over five years because of this, so oh, okay. it's literally destroyed my connection with all my family. I don't speak to people, not at that one. Okay, so, now we're at a certain age in our lives, all of us, and um, and maybe we, we have desires that we have now decided that we're going to feel comfortable with. We can do this. We can act this out without really feeling like it's traumatizing us or it's going to harm us anyway. It's just what it is. Now, have you ever felt that I need to stop this? There's times when I've, I've gotten a little uncomfortable with, but it's a lot of my head. I deal with like depression and PTSD. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, little things could trigger me off and I just, when I feel that I'm, I'm ever in a place that I'm uncomfortable or whatever, I just, I, again, I listen to myself and I give myself a break. I, I've learned as I've got to go easier on myself as opposed to, you can do it, just push through it. It's not, no, it's okay to be weak. You need a minute, mm -hmm. take a minute. You need a day, you need to just, you know, maybe Amen. do okay. you. It's fine. There's you nothing know, wrong with that. You know, that's great. That's great that you say that. It takes a lot. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something, um, Gigi. In this life, I have been beat up a lot in this community in our community, in the general. But I didn't let that stop me. Mm -hmm. I kept knowing, for some reason, something kept saying, mm -hmm. keep moving. Mm -hmm. And my mother used to tell me that, and now my agent, she tells me this all the time, mm -hmm. don't look back there. Yeah, that there's, hurts there's no future back in there. history. You look what's in front of you, yeah. and you keep moving forward. And I thought to myself, she's right. And now that I've done that, I feel like all this stuff is off of me. Mm -hmm. And I keep looking forward, and having a great support system around you is key. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you have Dave in, in this world that sometimes people might not understand mm -hmm. is a good thing. Because, mm -hmm. um, you know, coming from a Christian background, if my parents were alive, I miss you, mom and dad, they were amazing to me when I was a child. I'm, I'm just being honest. They never beat me up or never did anything with me. They took very good care of me, and to this day, they still are taking care of me, if you know what I mean. But at the end, you really need to have a support system and people that understand what this is all about. And, and we, as a society, need to stop closing this in. It's, it's almost like it's a form of, uh, we don't see it. Don't don't see. Don't tell. Mm -hmm. Am I saying that right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah don't ask for help. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm glad that the two of you were able to talk about this. I mean, it, it's hard to talk about your fantasies and what you like in bed, and mm -hmm. and, and that you've been with other people because people have a perception that they think that they're all Christians. Because at the end of the day, a lot of these people that are laying out there in their beds and having these hookups on these hookups. Yeah, it's apps, delusional. I mean, yeah. let's be honest. And if you're a Christian, the first rule, love everyone, judge no one. Mm -hmm. That's the first rule people need to understand. Mm -hmm. God doesn't have hate. Like, when well, people have to think, like, oh, it's against God's whatever. Like, that's not, that's not my There's God. My God loves everybody. He includes God everyone. created everything on this earth. And, and only him. man he thinks he can judge what God created. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, you know, I'm, I, I'm glad you guys came on to talk about this. I, I don't want to take up too much more of your time. Um, I just want to say thank you, Gigi. You're beautiful. And, and, Can I ask a question and, and, before you sign off? Mm -hmm. I want to ask a question. In the level, in the world of BDSM, I know in every world there's a form of um, discrimination slash racism. So let's use it in the sense of, do you have to deal with people who go, I'm a better BDSM person than you are? 
Like in that world of BDSM the lifestyle, the true yeah. lifestyle. Well, since we're the best. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> we don't get that. We but don't do you find if I showed up to a BDSM party in a dress up version of leather, I may be all wanting to go for it, yes. but they discriminate. In the gay community, I noticed, right? Mm -hmm. I, I, I spent a lot of time in the village. In the gay community, they're developing the big old yard leather people. Mm -hmm. They are very discriminatory against um, somebody who may want to wear a corset. You may want to wear high heels with your leather. A male that may yeah, want yeah, to Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the whole... So there's still a masculinity yeah, issue. Yeah, yeah, there is a masculinity issue. And even in our village, mm -hmm. I've seen it. Um, and that's uh, mainly with the international Mr. Leather guys and stuff like that. And, and those will be masculine guys. Mm -hmm. As soon as uh, somebody wants to be a little bit feminine, they're not quite accepted. Mm -hmm. um, also, there's like a thing between the fetish, the uh, the, 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 the dominatrix and dom thing, mm -hmm. who provide real time sessions compared to fin dom. The fin doms are kind of like back down upon the site. So everyone feels that there's a, a hierarchy of what world <laughs> you're in, what you perform, what you do, whether it's a puppy play, there's the higher end puppy play, the less end puppy play. Yeah, there's I mean, the high end dominatrix. No matter how you feel as a dominatrix, I mean, you I may look down at points. I don't like boys. I want to see somebody else's fetish. It's just do you at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just do Big time, part time, small time. Just, just but do you do find you there is that, that there form is, of yeah. discrimination. I, I, definitely I think that. this is across with like, any business or any like lifestyle. You know, your neighbor's doing the same shit to you, too. Right? Well, see, that's what I'm trying to, trying <laughs> yeah, to see yeah. is that yeah. no matter what you do, mm -hmm. no matter where you are in this world, someone's going to think they're better than you. Yeah. Yeah. So do you. You're right, just do yeah, you. Just do it exactly easy. how you want to enjoy it because uh, it's your enjoyment. Yeah. 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 Okay, just, just a couple more questions and then we'll close it out. Um, have you ever, now, you know, it's today with the Black Lives Matter thing and the, and, the, and the coronavirus thing that we're dealing with, all of this stuff. Just the first question is this Do you think the coronavirus is as serious as they? make it out to be and how does it pertain to your business? Well second second screen. <laughs> oh okay. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. screen, okay. And wanting to um getting a little it's a little more like so you are being cautious towards Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And we make sure people Good. have taken the steps and wear masks. Taking care of yourself. Yeah, we're not getting as close to people and I, okay. Yeah. All right. So we're all trying to be safe, sanitizing, wearing mm -hmm. masks, and we're just sort of promoting and helping push the safety rule for everybody. Yeah. Um, just to make sure we're all okay. Now that's a good thing. Um, even with me doing my shows, I try to stay on track in substance. Which, mm -hmm. when trying to do all of this and mm -hmm. remember a mask, even when you get on the subway with your mm -hmm. groceries. It's a tough thing. And trying to pull out your pistol card, put your mask on, yeah. grab your groceries. That's, that's the most thing I hate is like, oh shit. You got my keys, a cell phone, and I just freaking mask. Right? Mm -hmm. you know, and lipstick. Like mask. <laughs> oh, yeah. Lipstick sales are down. <laughs> yeah. Now, in, in closing, now I want to ask this question because I know that a lot of the, 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 let's just say, people of color that come to two attractive white people, let's just say in general. Mm -hmm. Have you ever felt, or have you ever felt the racism thing is, because you know, some Some people even just play into that, right? I mean, they're coming for that. They do, oh, they yeah, do the race play? Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you find there's a thing with race play? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It seems to be a very hush-hush. Oh, I've totally seen yeah. it discreetly mentioned here and there, and people seem very like they don't want to say it publicly, but it seems to be more people than who admits. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. It's a huge thing. Definitely. Yeah. Well, you know, I try to do it with talking to black women because I mm -hmm. find that that is the core. I already know that black men try to to, to sort of do something, mm -hmm. but I know black women keep this bottled up inside of them because they run under that umbrella of Christianity or mm -hmm. or or I'm I'm just too good for that. But at the end of the day, we watch these amateur videos on YouTube, mm -hmm. and we watch all these people on these hookup sites doing kind of strange things. And we know that, like he said, they're average, average housewives and mm -hmm. school teachers and librarians. Mm -hmm. And it's just strange that 
this is still taboo today. What's your perception too? I think a lot of it's like it's fear mongering also with the media. I mean, they kind of like force it to be a certain way. But I mean, I think this depends what filter you're looking at the world through. You know what I mean? If you're looking for that that hate or your very sensitive topic, but you know what I mean? If you, if you want to play, and I'm not, I'm not trying to use color, but like play a victim of any kind, then you know that, I mean, that's up to you. But as far as I answer the question from a black woman's point of view, mm -hmm. I could do that. Right? I only know my perspective. Oh, but, I, I do like that um, you say can play a victim because in your world, do, the like, victim is true. actually called a sub. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. It's, it's a completely different thing. And yeah. it's, <laughs> you're technically not victimized because you're giving your permission. Yeah. So you can play a role mm -hmm. that you might like, but it's okay because you're giving your permission to play that role. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's a, a, it's a world, yes, role, it's like a world you can live in, Yeah, I want to say properly, mm -hmm. where emotionally you're, you're yes, that's, yeah. that's the way. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's the key, that word right there, as long as that's in it. Okay. I'm going to say this in closing. Uh, you know, thank you guys so much for joining us here on the Stephanie Stevens uh, show. Uh, today I had Gigi and Dave Stryker on, and Renee. Um, so, um, we were talking about the underworld of sexual desires of the BDSM um, world. Sometimes we suppress our desires um, because of our religion or just the fact of family, friends, or job. And Gigi and Dave came on to just give us a little bit of, um, to explore the world of BDSM. And I'm glad that we had it all. We had a great conversation with Gigi, from a from a real a woman's point of view, because a lot of women that watch this will feel that they didn't want to hear from Dave. They would rather hear from another woman and how she felt when she's in this world that can be sometimes concerning for women and uh, for trans women as well and people of color and and for Dave to come out and just to say you know to talk about how even in the gay community, the gay community still um, discriminates against men who, who just feel like they just want to be themselves, um, wear corsets or wear high heel shoes or just maybe sometimes be a little bit too excited to just be who they are. Now, I want to say thank you guys so much. In closing, Gigi, what would you tell women that want to explore this world I mean, mainly if you have a partner like Dave that's very supportive, what do you want to tell women about this? You know, I mean, because I want them to understand that you're doing this mm -hmm. because you're comfortable with Dave and it's safe. Mm -hmm. So, like, more or less the women that are kind of like scared to bring up to their boyfriends or their husbands or whatever, mm -hmm. um, do the role play on your husband or your boyfriend. You know, I had um, a lady come and she's like, oh, I want to do this and that. I'm like, okay, well, then show him. Show him, do the role that you've seen that you want to see. Make him, because, oh, I'm sorry, he like rolls over and go to bed. No, he's not allowed to do that. Sit on the ground, say you're sorry, and now go look in the corner. You know, I mean, show him. You can only express yourself. I mean, to have all those like sexual feelings just harbored inside and festering away, and you're just so horny and you can't sleep. It's awful. Do it. Do this, do that. Now it's your turn. I don't want you to do that tomorrow. You, you got to make your man understand. It's your sexuality, it's your liberation, you know. We, I think it was women we've been repressed for so long. Oh, we shouldn't wear this, or we shouldn't talk like that, or your lipstick's too red. It's 2020. Let's just like move on with it already, you know? Mm -hmm. But a closed mouth doesn't get fed, end of the day. Speak That's up. true. That's true. Yeah. My mother used to always tell me, because when we used to go to the store, my brother and sister would always grab everything off the counter, and I would be just standing there looking at something, and she'd be like, listen, the cart is full. Mm -hmm. You have nothing in the cart. If you don't start speaking up and putting mm -hmm. what you want in the cart, you're going to get nothing. Exactly. And I'm not going to tell you more than once. You go get what you want, put it in the cart, I'll even say yes or no. Mm -hmm. So learn to speak. Mm -hmm. Now, Dave, for you, it's great that you're supportive of Gigi. I, I commend you for that because a lot of men will just look at it as though it's just sex and, and that she's my woman, she will do what I want her to do and all these kind of things. And for you to be open to her 
ideas about how this should go, how the business should go, and to talk constantly because communication is the key, and I'm sure it really has to be the key with this kind of yeah. a world because it can be kind of concerning at times, uh, more for you, JJ, than it would be for Dave. Mm -hmm. Now, Dave, what do you say to men out there that might look at you and say, oh, he's a fag, or he's <laughs> mentally ill, or he's crazy? What would you say to people out there, men out there, that look at you like that? I say, <laughs> every I mean, I'm sure you've had that. Oh, I, I get a lot. Constantly. Oh, I think it's association with latex and being gay. Mm -hmm. I walk mm -hmm. outside, I get called a faggot every day. Mm -hmm. And I don't care because I know exactly where it's coming from. It's not coming from a place of, oh my God, what is faggot? It's coming from a place of, this is threatening to me because I have maybe a similar, maybe even a different need or fantasy inside me that I am too afraid to fulfill. It's like, whatever you want, just, just do it. You might get criticized a little bit, but what the fuck, <laughs> right? I mean, look what I have. <laughs> she saw it. And, and let's face it, yeah. people are jealous you're living your best life yeah, the way you want to live it, and they want to ruin that for you. <laughs> That's all it is. This is my fantasy, and I have it. I have mm -hmm. my fantasy. I have my fantasy mm -hmm. sitting there beside me. Well, you know what? I just want to say thank you guys for coming on the show today. You shared a lot with us, and we've learned a lot. And I'm glad I got to know you a little bit better, Dave. Over the years, you've been very supportive of me to get this going. And Gigi, it's nice meeting some of you beautiful, and I just the makeup is impeccable. And I'm so jealous to you. Well, you know. I'll do it for you anytime. Okay. Um, she and, looks just like me, twin sisters. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And so thank you guys so much for being on the show today. Thank everybody out there thank you. for watching the show today. Be Bye. sure to share the video, and we will chat soon. Thank you guys for being on the Stephanie Seaman Show. Oh, we're out, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.